UVs. So we're going to be looking at UVs. We're going to look at basic shapes. So here's my basic shapes. This is a project that is in the project folder or show notes for unit one. So please have it open. Now, why basic shapes? Well, it spans the simple concept of using and drawing with basic shapes even. Basic shapes come up over and over. If we learn how to do basic shapes, complex shapes come from basic shapes. So the same concept goes, if you know how to texturize basic shapes at first, we can then move on to complex shapes. So this is all about UVs, the complete story, not leaving anything out. So one of the things that you're going to need is you're going to need Blender, of course. You're going to need a program called GIMP. Okay, and that's got GIMP.org. If you have Photoshop, you can use Photoshop. But for the students that have um, no money to go out and buy Photoshop or any Adobe products, I'm using GIMP. And I'm going to be using GIMP throughout the entire series. Now, to get started, I'm going to make a new document in GIMP. So you get GIMP at GIMP.org. Okay, you can download it for both either Mac or Windows. Same with Blender. And in GIMP, we're going to be making this document and showing you how to use it to broadcast UVs onto the surface of basic shapes. And then we're going to be building the UVs for those basic shapes. So file new, 64, 64 pixels, and hit OK. So to get started, uh, what about that number? Why was 64 by 64 used? So keep in mind, I have a student spectrum across the board. Some have been in 3D, some have not. Um, some have been not on a computer. Some are just gurus at computers. So these are numbers in the power of 2. And we know these to be a lot of things. Uh, so 8 times 2, 16, 16 times 2, and et cetera, so forth, all the way down. And why did I stop at 4096? First, the history of the numbers. So we know that there's 8 bits. Okay, We know there's 16 bits. They were video games, right? 32-bit video games, 64-bit video games. Okay. And right now we're in in this era. Now there's 128, 256. You know, if you're into encryption stuff, we know that there's 128 bits of encryption, 256 bits of encryption. And as we crawl up the evolutionary scale, I can tell you right now that console games use a texture space of 1024 and 2048 with being very sparse on the 2048 maps. PC games are a little bit more 2048 geared and a little bit sparser on the 1024 maps. 4096 is around the corner. I, I almost predict that probably within, you know, a couple years we're going to be seeing more and more maps that are 4096 in probably PC games and then it'll trickle down to the console world so we're not there yet um, but it seems like video games are being targeted for physics and um, you know the HD lighting type of scenarios right now so when we get to 4096 it'll be fantastic but Right now, I would say there's very little video cards that can render that very quickly as far as game level. So we're at the mercy of hardware, and then we're also at the mercy of whoever is developing the game engine to to make it so it's lean to run 4096 maps. And then we're also reliant on hardware of people that have 4096 available to them 
to be able to render that full time on their computers. So we're not there yet, but I predict in about three years, yes. That being said, we, we are living in a fantastical age of textures. There's no doubt about it. We can have a lot of detail on a lot of things. So I'm perfectly happy with 2048. And here's how it goes. If I have a, a mesh that has a 2048, that is just saying that it has four 1024 maps available to it. Okay, and we'll get into that. Same with 1024. That's just saying that there is four 512 maps because it's cubed. Okay. Let's get into the concept of UVs and this pattern that is a checkerboard and why we use it. Uh, first know that control on the keyboard and wheeling in and out allow me to zoom and spacebar allows me to pan okay so kind of gimp 101 here then head over to the ruler click and drag out and we're going to be setting a dividing mark at 32 pixels and I know that to be true is because right here drag this out 32 pixels And then I'm going to be using the marquee tool. I'm going to fill this with gray. Fill this one with gray. So here's my fill tool. I'll just fill it with gray. Gray could be produced by just clicking on the, the color swatch. And you can see that you can pick up many of colors. What value gray doesn't really matter. Okay. There we go. Now I'm going to marquee select the entire thing and go edit, copy, edit, paste as new pattern. Okay, now there usually is a box that pops up. So the thing about GIMP that you have to know is that the fact that these things float around so uh, let me try to find that box it's good stuff haha there it is so I'm gonna be calling this UV okay now we're gonna make a map so this is 64 we're gonna make a map that's four times si the size of that, so I'm going to go to 1024. Now does that matter? No. Um, the fact is, I like the 1024 because the pattern is small enough to technically show on smaller meshes, so, and I'll show you why. Okay, so I got this. Again, the floating tool palette. So here's my toolbox. Um, and if I choose the fill, I can use pattern fill. And I have UV selected. There we go. There's our UV map. I'll get into what it does and why it exists. But for right now, let's save this as. Save this in a certain location for me. So. I'm going to add a new folder here. Oh, there it is.
So I have a work in progress series for everything here. This is unit one. So what I would do is in this, make a unit one folder. Underscore, first name, last name. Keep very organized in this class. I can't tell you that enough. You will be graded upon your organization levels. So I'm going to make this named UVs. It's going to be a targa file. Period TGA. So that's the extension for targa. Targa is a very lean, lossless format. There's lossy and lossless. You want lossless in in the fact that you want high developed textures and the fact that, that anything with a compression, so lossy has a compression, lossless does not have a compression. Anything with a compression, like a JPEG, you know you're going to lose quality and you're going to lose speed because whatever program has to read that compression. With TGA there is no compression. The same goes true with a format called TIFF, but I know that if I show you TIFF and make that the standard within the class, students abuse that too much because TIFF supports layers and then they then they get out of control with layers. So we're going to be making things out of TIFF but your end result or hand-ins are always going to be TGA. Okay, So here's UV TGA and we're going to save that out. Now unfortunately I can't reach the save button because of the the space GIMP takes up, so I'm going to have to move this off to my other monitor and hit save at the bottom of the screen. You're going to see me sit. I'm going to be doing that a lot. So After I hit save, I get this. I'm going to hit save again. And now in the next video, we will see what we use this map for. Meet you there.